you remember your first performance <coughs> takeoff? Um, initially, you don't do performance takeoffs on the Lightning because it is so performant. It, you do uh, a dry power takeoff without reheat uh, for that reason, because the performance is so good, you just never, you'd never catch up with it really. So um, initially, it's all dry power takeoffs. And even the very first takeoff, everything is just, you are so far behind the aircraft, it's just untrue. You know, they say that you know, once you do your first takeoff, I was with it all the way until the brakes were set off or something, but actually, you're probably still back in the crew room somewhere because it's a very unique aircraft that, it's got a starting system which requires um, AFPIN, which is like the old um, World War II um, rocket comet aircraft. So you're basically getting this mono-combustible fuel which sits up in, the, in a tank at the top there <coughs> and you're pouring this fuel into the engine, you're pressing an igniter and it's just going bang and exploding. But once it's started, you've only got the fuel in the wings and the ventral tank and it's almost like lighting the blue touch paper on a rocket. So once you've got the aeroplane started, you just watch the engines wind up and then the fuel gauge is starting to tick away. So if you're very slow or you're a bit behind the drag curve, the other guy's getting even more impatient now because you're going to run out of fuel before you get in the runway and it's everything is on a timer so you're taxiing out you're trying to do all your checks getting them in the right order you haven't even got the radar or the weapon system to worry about at the beginning all you're worrying about is flying the aircraft but you're conscious all the time of the fuel just dripping away burning away before your very eyes and the airplane handles like no other aircraft so if you've flown a hawk it's very nimble on the controls and very light but a lightning is, is quite heavy on the takeoff roll but then the wings are so highly swept that <clears throat> you just don't appreciate that as soon as you go into a turn below 300 knots, it doesn't turn and it just goes into this light buffet or heavy buffet. And so you start flying around the aircraft and you think, I'm never going to hack this either because it's just not like a jet provost or a hawk. So it, it's, a, it's a massive culture shock on your very first flight. So did it live up to its name, the Franklin? Um, yeah, it was. I, I would put my hand up and say it was a frightening aeroplane to fly as a 22 year old or three year old and I you know I was quite old I'd already done three years on the Phantom so I'd already you know had a massive advantage over other junior pilots because I'd already strapped into a Phantom I don't know 600 times and I'd already done air combat I'd already done low level affiliation so all that stuff I'd, I'd seen before but I felt so sorry for the guys who'd just come from Broadie, who were 19, 20, whatever they were, and this was their first look at a fast jet <clears throat> with these very, very unforgiving instructors. And of course, I'd, I had a, a definite edge on them, and I'm sure I would not have passed otherwise. 